So uh, we've got two gentlemen here in the studio to shed some light on this matter. Uh, Gaba Sheo, Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Dari Rio Toye, who is a rights activist. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Sheo, I'm just wondering, is, it P is the APC going <coughs> to uh, go ahead and throw this party, knowing that uh, the PDP says, look, we're going to the Supreme Court? Because they think that there are some inconsistencies with that judgment. Well, uh, and, and uh, my partner this morning is a lawyer, so I don't want to offend <laughs> lawyers. But <laughs> I think lawyer. lawyers also must find food to eat. So yeah. if they go to Supreme Court, it should not surprise anyone. However, I think that uh, this turned out to be perhaps the most comprehensive, the most disastrous outcome for any petitioner in any election. And, and to say you are going to the Supreme Court to prove what? You can, from the way that judgment, that judgment was delivered yesterday, for all of those 10 hours, you could see that many of their decisions were anchored on decisions of the Supreme Court itself. So what do they expect? That Supreme Court will say, well, we are sorry, we were wrong the, last, the first time we did these things, and so you have your way, but they are entitled to their right to appeal. But I mean, uh, uh, taking that long, that was quite a job of work in terms of the duration that it took to deliver that judgment. But uh, for the PDP's perspective, and given what uh, Mr. Sheo has said, what's your perspective about the judgment? Um, thank you very much, Chamberlain. Um, before I respond, sorry, let me just uh, commiserate with my people in Nikiti State over developments in the Federal University there. Uh, I believe that the state will find a way to solve that problem. On the election petition tribunal, it lasted for almost about nine hours. And I think that we have not seen the end of it. I am not hopeful of anything in terms of probably maybe anything will change significantly, but what I'm looking at is how we are using the, the process of election petition for nation building. What are, the, what, are, um, what are going to be the takeaway from that judgment? Why am I saying this? Is I've been attending election petition tribunals since 2007, and, I, and nothing has changed in terms of almost similar thing. That was why when uh, the lead, uh, lead uh, judge yesterday, Justice Garber said, uh, election petitions uh, Swiss generates. And I found it a bit interesting simply because um, when you look at some of those things that are lay our elections, and they're almost the same thing, you know, reoccurring themselves, they're probably in a different uh, manner. But what I saw yesterday, um, I must say that I was a bit taken aback, and I have to put it uh, clearly. So we've been watching films. We've been watching Vampire Diary. And you've seen that, curiously, of recent, some people have been doing campaign globally for human beings to be eating human flesh. Probably, maybe you've seen some articles in New York Post. We have also watched... What's the connection? I'm go that's where I'm going. We have also watched films where they talked about how people <clears throat> travel in time past. Films like Men in Black 3 and uh, uh, The Time Machine. Now, those, these two films, what they say is how people travel back uh, decades or centuries, probably to go and undo or repair something that they didn't do well. So what happened from this, my own, I mean, from why I'm making this inference is because I saw judges traveled time back to 1961 to manufacture, to create, and dump or probably put and, I mean, at the uh, military board. That's the military board. Are you saying they manufacture judgments in this case? What I'm saying that, cases? what I said that I saw judges went back in time to manufacture, create documents, and to probably dump it. manufacture or reference. Yes. Now, what am I saying is that manufacture here it stays. So you, you have a case before you as a judge, and they said documents were not submitted. Somebody said, I don't want us probably, probably if we take uh, with the president here, who probably because of the president of Ferrari Talk Republic. about the judgment. That's exactly what I'm delivered. saying. Because What's the president inspired? of Ferrari Republic of Nigeria, you'll not be able yeah. to see the import of what I'm saying here. So what happened? The president was before the court. He said, I on hold that my records are with the military. Now, it has been the same thing since 2003. Now, somebody came and said, no. You don't have any record with the military. So the judges 
instead of asking, probably the person who said my records are with the military, to ask, where are your records? Why can't you bring your records? And don't forget, the witnesses called. They didn't, before the judges, before the judges, they didn't bring either the watch or whatever. They didn't go to the military tribunal to bring this document as pleaded on oath. They went to another body to get a document which was split. You know why I'm making this fact is that yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, so I'm, not, I'm not worried about what's going to be the outcome. I'm worried about what's the implication for upcoming generation. Yeah, so what's your thoughts about that particular <clears throat> clause in the judgment? Are you saying that uh, the, the judges erred in saying that uh, the certificates that he was eminently qualified? I say, judge, you cannot go back in time to say sure? that they had a certificate when there was no, when there was no pleading whatsoever that, the, I mean, there were certificates before the military. If there were certificates, you simply go and get the certificate. Are you, are you aware, I am not are you, saying, are you, are you sorry, aware, are you aware, are you aware I, I am the, not saying the president is not qualified. Are you aware of the fact in that judgment that um, uh, the, 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 the judges, the, the panelists, you know, the, uh, quoted and said, according to the Supreme Court judgment, Submission of educational certificate is not a requirement for qualification to contest election for governor under Section 177 of the Constitution. Yeah. So uh, does, that, does that, that matter? Thank you very much. That's another interesting point. Now, that brings me to the whole uh, provision of issue of qualification. I think, I think it's a nonsense. We don't actually need that provision. The president is qualified to contest. Let me tell you. What they did wrong, like I told somebody. So why? why no, why, I'm coming. It why was, was because it necessary of, to make it reference was, to this certificate. Good and fine. It was because, now. you see, the fact that you are qualified to contest doesn't mean that you should go and do a wrong pleading on oath. So what I'm saying here is this. For instance, if I were the president, as at the time I was wanted to go and submit my form, I go to um, uh, the, the court and said, swear, I mean, to an affidavit that my name is so, so, so person. I retired as a major general. Nigerian army. That was, I'm coming, Chamberlain. That was sufficient. Yeah, you've been speaking for a while, no, so he that, needs to come in. That, that was sufficient enough, but okay. in terms of... Uh, Go ahead and respond to what he said, man. Well, uh, I, I don't know who is trying to manufacture things between the judges or my friend here. Okay. Because uh, what the court said yesterday was that, yes, the, military, that the document you pleaded they told PDP and the, the vice president, Atiku, uh, that, that, is, that document is fighting against you. That document is itself against you. Because the military said, yes, we don't have body certificates, but we have his records. So the issue is not of certificates. The issue is, do they, do they have records? And they said, we have his records. He entered five credits. And, and, and on the basis of which he was admitted into the military school. So the most ridiculous thing that came out of yesterday's thing was that that PDP pleaded a document that, against, that was against themselves. So you cannot go back on that issue. And it's a matter that has been resolved. And in fact, they did say, in addition, that all of the military courses he attended were beyond secondary school education. They were the equivalent of university degrees. So what is the issue there? But well, you know, some of the response to you from the PDP is that, even though we tried to get them on the show, but they, they couldn't make it. They, they argue that, look, if the judgment, some of the judges are saying, well, they dumped evidence on us, you didn't speak to those evidence and tied to your case, then how come, uh, since the president also had uh, uh, Mr. Kerry go to, came, uh, to get documents and come and prepare the party himself wasn't there? They thought that there were some inconsistencies with that because they felt he was taking... Uh, the side of the lawyers are trying to prove their own case as to as opposed to just ruling on what was clearly evident. They thought that they proved that the president didn't have those certificates because he didn't produce it. Yeah, but so what is the requirement of the law? The judgment stated clearly. Yeah, they, they also said that the requirement of they, the they law. Were asking, so where is the proof? How do you prove that there's an equivalent of that education, which is a, you, you, you and because all of the military records are there. And they've been pleaded. So what is the issue there? You know? Do you not think that there's any? No, but... th there's no issue. The Supreme Court had decided, oh, he just read that section of the law, <laughs> clearly stating that presentation of the certificate is not a requirement of the electoral law. So if I have my records and proving beyond all reasonable doubt I have them, Cambridge presented them, why West Africa had 
presented his certificate. And you know one of the things that happened? A coup d'etat was staged, violent overthrow of someone from office. And in the course of which, he was, his, they, they vandalized everything. You know, maybe the people who are promoting this issue certificate knew what they did to his household when they took power from him. That's why they are promoting it. But uh, we thank God that uh, the judges have, for the first time, I would say, all of them, they, nobody had a dissenting opinion. There is unanimity. All of the major planks of their you know, case, all five of them smashed in one fell swoop. So yes, I think that it's a major, major victory but for you President know, Buhari and the APC. But you know, one of the things that a number of people also query is the fact that, look, uh, the, the, the fact of so many votes, you know, that the vice president, who unfortunately couldn't prove in this case, uh, the fact that it was, you know, rubbished is something that is really, really giving a number of people, uh, you know, a cause for concern. On the one hand, are the cases brought by some people about electronic voting, uh, electro electronic uh, transmission of votes and all mm -hmm. of that. On the other hand, is the burden of proof on, on, on the vice president, former vice president, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, this thing. So one of the things that anyone would wonder right now is, do you think that is enough justification to validate the, 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 the election of the president, even though, I mean, uh, one of the issues that they're raising is that it's, there is no basis for it in law? The important thing to note is that this election won by President Muhammad Bari was, was, was won by a solid majority, 55.6% of the overall vote cast. His closest rival came short by about 4 million votes, which is about 15%. But that's what he, of the, he, of the that's votes. What he is quarreling against and saying, look, it's what he, he, yeah, he, he won the election by 6 million. He, he, but he couldn't prove nothing. He couldn't prove anything. In fact, the thing you mentioned about electronic voting, I think that that, that, that turned out to be the most laughable aspect of the entire thing. Because, look, those judges stopped short of calling that ex so-called expert as a fraudster because the so-called expert had no certification, had no competence to prove, he had nothing to show for those results that they had displayed. So it's, it's absolute mischief throughout, designed for purposes maybe to, to, to defeat, to defeat you know, a popular decision of the Nigerian people. You know, Dayo, Looking at this case and the history of Supreme Court cases, uh, I heard that those who think it's always a Herculean task in this country, no matter how strong, even if you had the best of cases, they just thought that question of substantial compliance, it's always difficult to prove election Absolutely. petition cases at that level. You see, I, I first, I agree with Mala Garba Shehu on the issue of uh, uh, this e-transmission. <laughs> And I think it shouldn't have been a ground for the PDP. However, which of them? The, the issue of election, I mean, that election, I mean, the collation of results. It was true that INEC did some collation. It was true that, for instance, an organization like Yaga captured it. But because INEC had used an excuse, which I think I had them saying it, there were two conflicting issues. What Irek said, and what also the chairman said. I saw all those things before the election, and I made it very clear that it was not going to work that's relying on intransmission. In fact, I specifically did a statement saying that they should on no account should anybody be denied voting in this coming election if probably the, um, uh, what do you call it, a um, down malfunction at any point in time. I think I made that very clear, and I think INEC should no, apologize. But INEC was not going to deny No, no, anybody. no. What INEC said was that Everybody must vote through the Kadrida. No, 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 no. You the, must... the accreditation. Yes, that's exactly Kadrida. what I'm saying. I'm Not talking about voting. accreditation. Sorry, use the word accreditation. INEC insisted on using and you see the judgment which the, the, the tribunal also made reference to yesterday. The judgment of the Supreme Court about this issue of Kadrida in terms of accreditation. Mm -hmm. That judgment subsists. So what I said was, I think what we should do is 
For us to also examine this thing critically, INEC by now should apologize to Nigerians who are denied the opportunity of voting simply because they had a problem getting accredited using the card reader. And that is the basic here. Yeah. Um, PDP had no case on that from my own perspective, simply because it was so clear before this election. And what we should do going forward what is that, thank God so that we have... Eh? What was so clear? So clear that on issue of card reader, we're not going to work. That the subsisting thing was still manual accreditation. It still no, supersedes. Well, I think what, what they spoke about was electronic transmission of results. No, apart from even electronic they transmission say, They didn't talk results. about electronic voting. I, that's it. I know. Apart from electronic transmission of results, what I'm still saying, even issue of accreditation, I'm telling you that using the card reader wasn't really the, the topmost thing. It still but even, even then, of, in, in the same uh, judgment, the judges were quoted to have said, card reader machine has not replace the voter register. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. But you see, in terms of e-transmission, believe me sincerely... E-transmission of what? I mean, results, electronic transmission of results. Okay. E-collation or e-transmission. Was there a now, what, basis for there, that? No, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. No law yet whatsoever. But I think that there are enough provisions which INEC will have probably say, okay, we want, probably, I mean, this is good for our election. Again, that will have also been invalidated one way or the other if anybody decides to challenge mm -hmm. that because the claim here, sorry, somebody let me land, the claim here is that this thing is not captured in the electoral law. However, I want to state that INEC has a duty, thank God Malam Garbashi is here now, to pursue is the INEC? amendment. <laughs> no, the amendment is the president. He, he, he is an head of the president. Uh, the president should sign the law for us to have it. Okay, let, let, let's bring that to him then, because the impression, perhaps, what you're leading to, for those who thought that, well, they thought we were making progress, uh, having the card reader there, trying to, some sort of automation of results processes and voting process, because the, the manual process, it's, it's something that we shouldn't be doing. Look at the time it took us, how cumbersome it was at, at that time. So they would think, look, with this judgment, it does suggest that all of those progress that we're supposed to have made with uh, the card reader moving towards electronic voting, may have been jeopardized with this judgment. Do you agree with them in any way? No, no I don't, because uh, you know that uh, with each election, of course, the National Assembly does uh, make the effort to review the Electoral Act and make changes where necessary so that improvements are made. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, before the 2019 election, I think that the entire atmosphere was itself fouled by you know, the antagonism of the parliament to the executive and the ill will with which the act amendment was approached. And uh, that warranted the back and forth between executive and legislature. And by the time a, a concurrence was reached, it, it was virtually too close to the election and too late for anyone to have signed the to, to law and, and make it come into effect. So yes, I agree, we have lost some ground um, but it's arising from this background that I just mentioned. And I hope that, yes, there will be an early start so that uh, we will have a very sound electoral act that would uh, take in all of these advances and formalize them, the technology that has been introduced and in increase, in fact, the involvement. What are the things that give you uh, concern about our electoral pro process for now? Well, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not myself an expert in all of these matters, but uh, some of these things that we have just witnessed, we're just coming out of a major, major dispute against a decisive victory won by the president. Let, let, me, let, me, I will, let me bring some, uh, is, some of the issues raised in mm -hmm. that judgment to the floor. Maybe it'll help to uh, uh, coordinate some thoughts. One of the, some of the issues raised were Irregularities marred by scarce resources. There were, you know, a significant number of reports done by many of our correspondents in that regard. Um, some also alleged manipulation of results sheets. You know, when collisions were happening at many of the voting centres, um, over voting, there were allegations of over voting here and there, wrongful recording of results, uh, intimidation of votes, among others. Yes, they, they. they complainant, the petitioners were not able to prove any, any of that, but definitely you see them as some form of concern as well. Well, uh, yeah, so these are things that question the purity of the process and the outcome. And uh, 
we as humans are we 100% in whatever we achieve it is difficult uh, to say so i think that the position of the law uh, as proven from this judgment is that uh, if all of these elements are visible as seen are they on a scale as to foul up the entire outcome if they are such that they don't they don't they don't destroy the quality of the outcome i don't think we should do that's on the one hand, but then you also mentioned the fact that there is need for us to re-engineer our electoral process, and maybe some of these issues might uh, I, come I, be reduced. I, to improve, process. yes, and I want to say, speaking for the president, I know that the president has uh, vowed on so many occasions that uh, his purpose in dealing with this matter is that, that he leaves behind in electoral outcomes in terms of quality that are higher than the one that even brought him to office. So uh, I guess... Uh, this uh, judgment obviously is a learning you know, document for everyone. Um, it would be arrogant of anyone not to look at it and say, well, let's uh, pick lessons from here. Mm -hmm. And I believe more than any other person, INEC uh, would study this and the National Assembly should act accordingly. Perhaps a document, a number of things that may also help are the different uh, various uh, election observers reports that we have had. From yeah, you. you know, that's our own attitude also to all of those reports. Uh, some of them had uh, misperceptions, had misconstrued a number of things. On the overall, we had welcomed all of the reports that came. And we say we studied them and take lessons. Clear lessons were written with purposes other than the improvement of the quality of our own processes. And, uh, uh, and to that, we, we certainly would... Uh, would Can you uh, give examples of such concerns? Well, some of these exaggerated reports about violence and, and all of that. Look, it's a country of 200 million people. It's a huge population. And where an incident happens in, say, 120,000 polling units, and you have recorded two incidents in maybe 1,000 ones, and then you make it, uh, you know, you generalize, make assumptions of the kind of thing that you just listened to now, violence against voters and <coughs> intimidation and all of that. And, and the evidence came short. And this is proven even from the judgments yesterday. You saw from all of the things that they, they hype, because there was an enormous hype behind that petition about violation, about, about uh, rigging and inflation of yeah, votes. Yeah, because BDP is of insisting that INEX server does contain <laughs> results that were transmitted, and that's and, part of why they were, and, and, want to go to that. But, but, but they has to produce evidence. They produced evidence from seven electoral officials out of 120 now, assuming those seven were right, assuming, because there was dispute, even the judges yesterday in that decision did make the point that, look, you are bringing people, some of them are coming to report here, see, they're not even original actors in the voting process. Yeah, but part of what they also said was, if Mr. Kerry got the certificate from Cambridge, none, because they say, I think I heard them saying, none of the president's classmates was in that court to say, yes, I went to school with him. Isn't that also hearsay? Ah, on no, the part no. of those who testified? No, no, there was, uh, well, there were classmates. I, 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 I didn't, I, well, I didn't spend I, I all my time been, listening to the judgment, say. but uh, if I am right, from what I know it happened in the process, there are classmates who went there and identified the class photographs in which they and the president were present in those pictures. But if the judge said, no, I don't want to quarrel with them. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to see change moving forward? Oh, thank you very much, uh, Chamberlain. Uh, I'm happy again that Madam Garbashe is here. I don't think the administration of uh, President Buhari is committed to electoral reform. Why, why do you say so? Yeah, because the, this president is not going to sign the amendment to the electoral. And if the president is so committed, we should see that uh, the administration... How do you know he's not going to sign? Of course, Kogib, he said the reason, I mean, the excuse he gave for not signing was because it was too close to election. Now, the president came in May 29, and this is September, and we have elections in, few, in a few weeks' time. The president hasn't signed it yet. Now, what we are saying again, in addition yeah, to but the... Yeah, uh, the process, this is the ninth assembly. No, it's not a matter of the process. The president still <laughs> wants to sign it. They've, they've made an amendment. I mean, and I think that previous law, I mean, previous bills that have been passed now, I don't think you don't need to start again. I think they, they no, made that. It's, it's, that's it's what I a ninth assembly. That I know this is. No, what I'm saying is that I know that is a ninth assembly. If the president but they've not presented it, if the president is committed, the the people, the Senate president and the speaker are from the same party. It doesn't take 
more than days. I mean, it doesn't take days. Are you suggesting the that the president should take the law, the bill from the Eighth Assembly and sign it without recourse to the Ninth Assembly in this uh, no, dispensation? What, what I'm saying is that the president has a bill. Okay. Which, and nothing stopped the president from signing this bill. And assuming that probably maybe that law has not been, because what I heard is that unlike the previous tradition, when bill dies in this previous session, that uh, probably they have to start all over again. I don't think that's the tradition. Okay, well, since Mr. Shaw is here, please. So, 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 so on now that point, have, let, me have, just no, no, let me just Let me just land. We have okay. the Ninth Assembly. Fine. Mm -hmm. they, they've sat for a number of days. The president can tell them we need this law for Kogi and Bayesa election. So probably I would be delighted to see Malan Garbashelu committing that the administration is going to sign the amendment to the electorate and we're going to have this used in Bayesa and Kogi the election. I want to see that commitment from so, this administration. Malang, why has the president so, not signed it? You are still like a lawyer. And you... I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> okay, well, you just, uh, we are just uh, discussing issues that stand in the way of, including the fact that the Constitution also has a prescription for how long a bill will remain valid or what is, if the president's assent is not on it. Absolutely, I know. It has to revert to the parliament if within that period. And when was the parliament, when was the Ninth Assembly inaugurated? And what business did they do? They came on board and they made the sacrifice of delaying, you know, their own, their, their recess. And they gave us ministers and they went on their recess. So... Please don't input, the don't, don't, don't input, don't input uh, motives. Mm. Uh, the president will sign the law, is committed to electoral reforms, That's and good. the bombs um, and the bombs under the bed have been removed. Once that is surely done, the president will sign. We know what was done in the earlier bill, and it's not just a matter of time. And, okay, and, 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 sorry. to one more impression about this, uh, because when... Uh, it was also said that uh, concerning INEC now, mm. that you know they had trained personnel for electronic trans transmission of results from polling units to INEC's office or server, and then that they were going to do that to ease all of those processes. And in some areas, they actually thought that this happened. So for those who still thought that there was some of those that occurred, and they just thought that all of a sudden, if you INEC says that never happened. Does well, that still take us well, back to well let me say this. Let me say this. I don't know whether there, was, there were trials or whatever, but the important thing is that, and the judges made it clear yesterday, electronic transmission is not in the law, is not in the INEC guidelines. But, but is so the card if it is, it is not law, it is not lawful, it is not lawful, it, it cannot be demanded of INEC that they should do. Is it safe to say that we have the infrastructure for it, but just, we can't just use it. My sense is that we, they, they had built up to it. But because the Electoral Act which permitted this did not come in time, it, it had to be abandoned. So, sorry, Chamberlain, I just want uh, also probably if Malangar Rashi will concur with me, based on the judgment, since he believes that that's a very sound judgment, we're having Kogi and Baeza elections. If the amendment to the Electoral Act is not signed before these elections, I want to ask if Malangar Rashi will concur that the people should be allowed to vote manually, simply because the issue of card reader or whatever electronic means in this ele electro I mean, electoral process has not been validated. I'm not, so I'm not aware that anyone because, has been denied. Because, be no, of course. No. I, like, I, like, I, like, I, 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 vote, I voted manually. Chamberlain, and I think you should take INEC to tax and the administration to tax over this. Yeah, but Mr. Nobody, Atoye, nobody when should you say vote manually, in Kogi and Bielsa. But could you shed a little more light? When you say vote manually, Everybody Vote voted, manually, everybody like voted manually. No, no, no. Voting, I'm sorry, accreditation, manual accreditation. Oh. I, I keep uh, uh, misplacing it. So what I'm saying here is this. You come with your card, I mean your To your be accredited PVC. with the card reader? Yes, no, with your PVC. If the card reader is not working, then they should use the register. But that's what, that's what happened. That's what no, I did. No, no, that's not what happened in many areas. That's why I'm saying it's good for us to do well, due diligence. Do, what do what I next said is that if the card reader is not working, they have to wait again. And we, we, no, we all no, saw no, this. No, no, no. You see? We have, to, we have two rules in this country, and that's one thing people no. are not doing deep diligence about. No. You no, but, saw but INEC insisting. I, I thought INEC put out the notice for, pre, for elections, in terms of the election guidelines, how they were going to proceed, and I thought it was clear. And that's exactly what we are talking about. You see, they have a lot of their officers. I, I mean, Chamberlain, on your TV station here, 
We had reports of people complaining that simply because their card, they couldn't read their card, that they were denied. Kogi and all those things. We saw that, I saw that report look, look, on look, let, that's and what I'm saying here. You, 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 didn't, saying, you didn't vote in this election. If you had voted, no, I, I was there at the polling station, of course, of and this side by side with the card reader is a voter's register. The, the card reader didn't recognize my own card. They read my name from the, 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 the template. And they permitted me to vote. Of course, and it's good that we're discussing so, many that. Others. so in Bayasa and Kogi election, I believe the people are here. If the card reader For doesn't now, act, the, the, I mean, the law, if, if, the law if, as stated by the judges yesterday is that, in fact, the, voters, the card reader is not a substitute for the voters' register. So if the voters' register is used throughout, it's a valid election. Nothing takes away from that. Good. I, I'm, 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 right. I'm happy that somebody from the administration is saying that. And I think this is a lesson for INEC to know that. It's either we have... Um, I mean, the, the, this he process validated by, by our laws, or probably we just go back and probably rely well, on If the bill is not register. signed, there can be no electronic voting. That, mm -hmm. No, apart from even the, the biometrics in terms of a, what we call it, a card reader accreditation. And I think INEX should place priority now on probably manual uh, accreditation over issues. Manual of, accreditation? Jettison? Uh, the card reader? The because card it's reader? of no effect. It's of no effect. It's time wasting. It's denying people the opportunity to vote. And I thought you were promoting invested. electronic voting. Of course. And of course, but not, not midway. No, 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 no. What I'm I, saying is this. Don't mind. I think he wants to... Chamberlain. No, no, no. no. What, what I'm saying is this. <laughs> electronic electronic uh, system, not midway. But what I'm saying to Malam Garabash is that let the president sign it. Let us have a full e-system. For elections, so that all right. Nigerians we'll land at that point. We well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Malam Gaba the uh, senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, and Ario Dari Atoye, who is a rights activist.